welcome back. My name is Lynn Wilson and I'm glad you're here today. Welcome to my kitchen. Pull up a chair. We're gonna make some soup today in the crock pot. So this is not a rocket science soup. This is not something you have to slave over a hot stove. I don't have time for that. Do you have time? I don't have time for that. And if you have time for that, it's not a bad thing. I would love to be able to do some more in-depth cooking. But this is cooking on a budget because budget money and budget time. So if you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of prep, but you want something that tastes like, ooh, so good, that's what we're gonna do today. We're making a navy bean soup. I don't know what it is lately. It, I don't know, you know, sometimes it, they, you go through trials and things in life. And I think with the last two months, especially with my dad, it was every day, you know, is today the day? Is he gonna pass today? That kind of a feeling. and. And uh, you know, a lot of that I couldn't share, but we were behind the scenes while we did a lot of these videos. And it was always that kind of waiting for the phone to ring, waiting for that shoe to drop. But I think in the process of that, maybe a lot of nostalgic thoughts came back. Um, I wanted to visit places I grew up in and, and I, I don't know, certain thoughts kept coming to mind. And I think I'm kind of in that nostalgic mood to just, um, enjoy some old fashioned things that I grew up on. And I remember it as a kid, my grandmother, I think it might've been like a can of Campbell soup or, you know, something, a can of something. And it was Navy bean soup. And I thought it was the best soup ever. My mom does lot, not like beans. So we didn't grow up on beans. I never had rice and beans or didn't even know how to cook beans. I saw beans in a, a bag and that's what you used for crafts. You you know, you did crafts with them. You poured them in a jar for decorative, and that's all I knew about beans. And but I remember having that soup, and I used to tell my mom, "What was that soup?" And she said, "Oh, that was navy bean soup." Well, then I got married, and occasionally I'd buy a can of it, and um, I decided I'm going to try and make some. So I usually use a ham bone when I make pea soup, but I don't have a ham bone. And I didn't feel like running out to get one. And the store, the grocery store closest to me, it's like hit or miss whether you find certain things, not because of, you know, what we've been through with the pandemic. They just, it is what it is. They just don't always carry stuff. So I said to my husband, I feel like navy bean soup with a twist. So this is a creation of Lynn Wilson. I don't know, maybe if, if you Google it, you might find it. But this is my own version of what my taste buds are telling me. So I'm gonna put it in the crock pot tonight and we're gonna make it. And then in the morning, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. And we are taking my son to go get his hair done in the morning. And it's a my pastor's wife who does his hair. And we usually try and bring her a little treat to say thank you because she won't accept payment. So two can play at that game. So I just usually make some homemade bread or you know, we'll pick up donuts or I don't know, we do different things. So I thought, well, maybe I'll bring her some soup right out of the crock pot, nice and warm, and they'll have lunch or for whatever, and she can freeze it if she doesn't want to eat it. So that's what we're doing now. And right now this, you know, casual, like I said, pull up a chair, relax. This is not anything fancy schmancy. This is just plain and simple homemade cooking. Um, we just got back a little while ago from my daughter-in-law's father. He passed away a month before my father passed away. So my son, who was a pastor, did the um, tribute to him and a short devotion about giving people hope in times of sadness and in times of when this should just not have happened kind of thing. And I'll include a couple pictures of that in between. And it, it was just, it was sad, you know, but we went to support my daughter-in-law and it was interesting that her and I both lost our dads a month apart and we could be there for each other in a very unique way and bonded us in a different way. So we got back from that, threw up the hair, got my work shirt on, put a pair of jeans on. We're getting down to business. We're gonna make this soup, get some dishes done. It has been a full weekend. So what I'm gonna do is get the soup going then I'm going to let you see some of the things we did for the weekend. And then at the end of the video, I'll bring you back to see what the soup looks like and we'll give a sample taste. So grab a spoon. So at the end of the video, you can taste along with me and see what you think. Okay, so 
main ingredient is navy beans and these are canned beans i didn't use dried beans you can use dried beans i went the easy way if you've never made soup before and you're what do i do there is a recipe on the back of the can you can easily follow that i don't have some of those ingredients so we're doing soup a la lin so i use four cans they recommend three i'm going with four and i don't like the um for a lack of a better way of saying it, the sliminess of the canned beans. So I rinsed my beans and I'm pouring that right in. So these have all been rinsed just in a strainer. Then what I think I'm going to do is, well, let me show you this. Then I, okay, so I have texture issues. Uh, my son is autistic and sometimes I think I'm, I got something. I don't know what I got, but I got something. I don't like chunks of things. Actually, I don't think my husband does either. We like things more. Do you like chunky? Oh, I, I, I like it like this. You like it like this. I find it brings more flavor to whatever I make. I just enjoy it more. So this was a couple of stalks of celery. This was one bag. In the beginning, I showed you a picture of the ingredients. Just one of those. Um, oh, I should have kept it, but yay big. You get it like 99 cents at the grocery store. And I just chopped it here in my food processor. You can see all the stuff in there. I chop it up. Once it gets in the soup, we all eat the celery. I would never eat celery. I, I don't like the texture of it. I don't like anything about it. But when it's like this and the carrots are like this, nobody knows nothing. So we're gonna dump that right in there. Now, one thing I do like, as much as I don't like my, um, how do I say it? I don't like my vegetables ch uh, thick. I couldn't think of how I wanted to say that. Sorry, I'm on a little brain fog here. I'm pretty tired. I don't like my vegetables thick, but I do like my soup stocky. So I like to almost have, what do they call it, a stoop, where it's like a soup and a stew rolled up in one. And then as you put it in the freezer, when you take it out, you always have to add water to it because it's so thick. That's how I like my soup. So one thing I used to do for my dad was I always made soup. And my father, I don't care, I could put one pea in a pot of water and call it soup, and he would say it was delicious. So we're going to call this Poppy's Soup tonight because in honor and memory of my dad, we are going to continue the legacy of Lynn's Soup, but we're going to turn it into poppy Soup, and I'm going to use this as a ministry and give this to people, which I'll be talking in later videos, but just blessing people with some soup. So now what I have is, this is my, my, my twist, Polish kielbasa. I did the pork and the beef one. I don't have a ham bone to put in here. I didn't want to put bacon in here. I know bacon's another thing, but I don't like, I like crispy bacon. I don't like rubbery bacon and soup. Yes, again, I'm very particular with things, but some of you might be too, and you look for alternatives. So I used canned beans, chopped up the vegetables, and I took, Oh, what size package? I guess they're standard. 14 ounces. This is like, I don't know how much this was. $5.99, $4.99, something like that. And I chopped it up just like I did the vegetables. Can you see that in the camera okay, Graham? You got it. Okay, so I chopped that up just like I did the vegetables, and I'm dumping that in here. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a ham bone, but to me, this will have that smoky flavor. So as it cooks for seven hours on low, it's going to absorb... The flavors are gonna infuse each other. And I'm going to add some chicken broth. I have a little packet. I'm gonna add that in there. I'm not gonna add any salt or pepper because the chicken broth has salt. Then I have better than bouillon. And this is the vegetable based one. This is brand new. I've not opened it yet. So I'm gonna add a little bit like a, I don't know, maybe two teaspoons or so of the vegetable bouillon. I'm gonna add that in there. My secret ingredient always for good cooking is Marmite. Those of you that know what it is, know it stinks. Oh, it's nasty. Like smelly socks nasty. Well, not for everybody, I love it. You like the smell? Oh, I love it. Oh, well, okay, some people like the smell, <laughs> but the taste in a soup or a stew, and you, I usually use the end of a fork because as you can see, it's like molasses. But I'm telling you, you put this in anything, it will take your soup from like a two to a 22 overnight. 
It's so good. You can buy this on Amazon, but my grocery store, both ShopRite and Stop and Shop carry it in the international section. So check that out. Then, oh, let's see if I can get the last little bit of, oop, it's sticking. It is like a molasses, it's thick. My husband likes Marmite on toast, a little butter and a little Marmite, and he's a happy boy. All right, we added that. Then what I'm going to do is just, I have this beef broth, bought this at the Dollar Tree last year during the pandemic, and it expires in September of this year. And I just, I don't like certain things going past the expiration date. So I'm gonna add that to here to give it some extra broth. So I have the chicken broth packet, I have the Marmite, I have to have a little bit of that better than bouillon vegetable based broth. So we're gonna add that. And the only other thing I'm gonna do is pour some water in, woo, carefully. Don't do it like I just did. But I'm gonna pour it in until it's almost to the top. Uh, yep, there we go, four cups of water. Lynn, you could not have timed that any better. Give it a quick stir. Look at this, can you see this? Oh my goodness. So the beans, the celery, the carrots, and the kielbasa are going to infuse with each other's flavors. And I think instead of a ham bone and putting in ham or bacon or anything like that, I really think this kielbasa is gonna do it. And this is gonna be an oh so good soup. So we're gonna cover this up. I've already set this on my crock pot on low for seven hours and my crock pot will automatically go to warm once the seven hours is over. So that'll be about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And we're usually up like 6, 6.30. So by then it'll still be nice and warm and we can just take the lid off, unplug it, let it cool off enough to put it in containers and deliver some of this deliciousness. I'm gonna bring some to my mom as a um, memory of my dad and then I'm gonna bring some to my pastor and his wife as a thank you for doing my son's hair and we'll bring you back. Don't forget to bring your spoon in a few minutes so you can sample it with me. So here are some of the fun things that we did over the weekend. We took our son to an autism event with a group from New Jersey called POAC, P-O-A-C, Parents of Autistic Children. They had a fun-filled weekend for the kids, Disney characters, fire trucks, free food, free ice cream. There's Grandma and I waving hello, train rides, all kinds of stuff. Gavin got to connect with his friends. It was fantastic. So the other thing we did is go to a place called the Shrimp Box, of course seafood, down at the Jersey Shore, but I ordered a cheeseburger. And we had dinner, we went on a bus trip with some friends, my mom came along, and then after dinner we drove to a place called Ocean Grove, New Jersey. It is a community, I guess you say, that was started, a town that was started many years ago, right on the beach, as you can see, and it was all a faith-based community. So there is a pavilion right on the boardwalk, and we went to see our friend Santos, who was in concert. He does Christian doo-wop. It was so much fun. We had a lot of friends there that we knew, got to connect. It was a great night out on the beach. Got to get there when the sun was up and bright and shining, and then we ended the night with a beautiful sunset.
Okay, so it is the next morning, or actually it's the next afternoon, but I've had this in the crock pot on warm. Got up this morning, did a quick sample test. It was delicious, and I took one quart size container to my pastor and his wife with a uh, loaf of cranberry orange bread that I made yesterday and some peaches that um, put that in a bag as a thank you for doing my son's hair. So I have two quart size. I would have had a third one, which you just don't see. This would have made a fourth and probably maybe even stretched it four to five quarts. Now that I think about it with all of this and so they're about four to five quarts from my crock pot. If you want to fake out yourself and not have to go hunt down a ham bone and so on and so forth. If you have kielbasa and you chop that up, I don't even know that you'd have to chop it up. You could probably use it, you know, in slices, but I liked it chopped up. This tastes like I cooked soup on the stove for hours upon hours with a ham bone. It has the same flavor. The kielbasa tastes like ham and the broth tastes like there was a ham bone in it. The only thing I did not do was add salt and I wasn't sure how salty this would be. It is not, to me, it needs a pinch of salt. So I think before I close up each container, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little salt on the top of each one so that that'll marinate as it freezes. I'm gonna put these in the freezer. This container is actually from the Dollar Tree. It has one of those lids where it pops up so you can let the um, steam out when you use it in the microwave. This is going with me to work tomorrow as part of my lunch. The rest of these, I'll probably keep one out for my husband and son tomorrow for lunch, and then these are going in the freezer for future meals. And you can see I have a messy crock pot. I learned from Amy Marion, if you're using things with similar flavors, why wash it? Just keep the flavors in there. This is still pretty hot to touch, but I'm going to make my um, ham, potato, cheese, casserole in the crock pot. So I'm just going to infuse all those flavors together. We'll never know the difference, and this way it saves me one washing, so that'll be the next thing on the menu that I'm working on. So let me just show you what this looks like. All right, see this deliciousness of the soup? The beans are just delicious as they were already cooked, but they're even more delicious now with the infused flavors. The carrots are nicely diced up. You can't even see the celery, but it is in there. And for fussy people like me and my son, you'd never know the difference. And the kielbasa is already, it's soft, it's delicious in there. It's made just the most delicious broth, tastes like a ham bone. Let's give it a little sample. Mm. This talks fall. This is fall. So if you want to fake yourself out and pretend you have a ham bone and you have kielbasa, use it. I've never done it before. I just decided to try it out and invent it and see how it comes. It tastes like ham and bean soup. It is so good, so good. Tomorrow with a sandwich at work, I am in business. I wanna thank you all for coming by. Stay tuned for some more food cooking videos coming up, a couple of clean with me's. I don't even know what. We're gonna, as life takes over, we're gonna record some of it, bring you guys along. Hopefully it encourages your heart to just try something new. Don't worry if you don't have it. You don't have the money, just use what you have. That's, that's what it's all about. You can write your own recipe book by saying, I lived on a budget, I created and made recipes using what I had. Again, thanks so much for allowing me to come in your home for just a little while and we'll catch you all on the next video.